The chickens are making compost, but the compost is making heat for the chickens. Hey. What's up, everybody? Bill with Honest Open Permaculture Hot Farm. Back out here with the chicken composting system. Let's give you an update. If this is the first time clicking on one of my videos. Thank you. My name is Bill. We are a small homestead in North Carolina, about 11 acres, just trying to be as sustainable as we can be. That's with our food, our money, our mental health, our physical health. Chicken compost system. How's it coming along? Pretty good so far. Smells like compost. The girls are loving it. Uh, we're about to throw a little grain in there, build it back up because they've been picking it apart. About every two days or so, I'm having to come in here and put it back together because they pick it apart pretty good and, and throw that throw that pile pretty good. When I came to open the door and let them out, it was about 10 o'clock or so, there was a good amount of steam coming off this pile. So I've got an idea. Tell me what you guys think about it down in the comments. I'm gonna go buy, I think I'm gonna go buy two thermometers. Um, ones you can just hang on the wall, pull one outside, pull one inside, and we will be able to see the temperature difference from the inside of the coop to the outside of the coop and see if this compost pile is making a big difference. Of course, it's also not just the compost pile. The birds are putting off heat, them breathing, putting off heat. Uh, the enclosed space is helping uh, can confine that heat. Uh, but I think this is definitely, I don't know if you can see it, but it's still steaming right now. Watch, hold on, hold on one second. I don't know if you can see that, guys. Let me get you close. Look at that. That thing is smoking, boys and girls. Sure. I got a few comments um, asking about the moisture buildup because of the compost pile. Um, as you can see, the moisture can escape pretty well. Hopefully not too much of it's gonna condensate on the chickens because it has a way for it to go out and it's not right underneath the chickens. See, the chickens roost are here. The pile is in front of the roost. So the steam comes up and then disperses out that way. If it was right underneath the chickens, the steam is definitely gonna be hitting the chickens. Um, and then the steam could freeze if it gets too cold. But hopefully with this house, the pile, and 30 chickens in here, we'll be able to keep it above freezing and that won't even be a problem. We'll see. We will we'll see. That thing is putting off some steam. So what we're doing right now, let me put you down. We got us a little coffee can here, some grain, and we're throwing it throughout the pile that they've spread. We're gonna throw a little bit in the back, a little bit around the bottoms. Look at that steam. Let's see if I can get you closer, even closer, guys. We'll bring this in with us so as we're uh, building it back up, we can sprinkle some food in there. Chicken activation. And also, we want to bring our watering can in here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit this with the water real quick. So as I'm putting it back together, it's got some moisture already in it. And I won't have to hit it. I won't have to pile it up, water it, pile it up, water it, pile it up, water it. I'll just hit this stuff right now, put it together, and at the end, hit it again. Heating up as much as it is, it's definitely using up a bunch of the water. And the moisture will help these seeds sprout and this cracked corn ferment just a bit. And just like pigs, those chickens love some fermented feed, some fermented corn. And they also love the sprouts and the scratch grains. All right, so we've got a good amount of water. We'll throw a little bit more food down. And let's just start piling this thing back up. Let's Let's loosen this up a little bit in the middle. This smells like compost, hot compost. If you guys ever built a hot compost pile, you know what I'm talking about. And it is steaming, guys. Now, I do have a slight design flaw in this system, well, in this chicken coop that I've noticed. Um, and the, on the back wall, on the cross pieces, when the chickens roost on the very top bar at, the, at night and they poop, the poop is dropping on the uh, cross beams instead of going on the coop floor like it should be. So, 
I have to come in with my handy dandy poop stick and knock it off the, the, the pieces on the back back there. And my poop stick came off the back of a, a small broom, which I can use to brush off also different stuff in here. So my utensils for this system so far is a pitchfork, a poop stick, and a little broom. What comes along with the moisture question on these chickens is also mites. And added moisture and warmth in the winter can, can harbor mites. We're going to have to watch for that in here. I have, this is my first go around doing this system. Never done this system before or a system like it. So I don't know if it's going to harbor mites or not. I think it would be a good idea to go ahead and start preparing for it just in case or preventing for it. Let's go ahead and try to jump in front of it right now so it doesn't happen and we're trying to cure the disease instead of not even getting the disease in the first place. Novel idea, right guys? So we're gonna do uh, a diatomaceous earth bath in here. So I'm gonna put a, uh, um, I'm retrofitting another egg crate that's what they use to lay their eggs in. That's what I have screwed to the walls, is egg crates. Um, I'm retrofitting one to where I can put diatomaceous earth in, in it in here. Hang it on the wall also. So they can have a, a, a nice dust bath in here. They have some outside the coop, but they're spending a lot, of t a lot of time in here during the winter. All night during the dark hours and then like I said, I've been leaving them in here till 10 o'clock in the morning to make sure they put in good work on this pile. With water, there is, there's a brick, there's a, a brick, a cinder block holding that door that's right behind you open so the wind doesn't blow it shut. And at night, the cinder block comes in here and one of the waters goes on it. And so they have water all night and during and in the morning. But they're in here working just scratching through this pile, eating, and they may need, they may need somewhere to take a dust bath in here. So uh, I think that was a uh, a comment from a Reddit follower. So thank you for making those comments. And I didn't think about that, but now that I am, I want to go ahead and jump in front of it and uh, cut it off. Like I said, I'd rather go ahead and not get the disease than uh, have to treat the disease afterwards. So let's go ahead and make them a, a, a nice bath in here. A dust bath of diatomaceous earth. I don't know if you guys can see this on this camera, guys, that, uh, but this material is really getting dark. There's a lot of leaves in it, so I expect it to get really dark. And it's breaking down fast. The size of the material is definitely different. I did not use a whole lot of shredded leaves in this. This is uh, in trash every once in a while. As you can hear, the streets right beside of us. I did not use a whole lot of shredded leaves. Most of them were full leaves. And the chickens are shredding them as they scratch and peck. Now this pile gets about four and a half foot tall at least when I'm done stacking it. I stack it about every other day because if you remember we've talked about this before in previous compost videos or if you don't know compost to be able to heat up a hot compost needs to be at a certain volume as well it needs to be a certain size a minimum of three foot by three foot by three foot three foot squared one meter one yard however the heck you want to say it it needs to be that big all the way around to be able to get a good heat up. Like little piles, sure, you can put some uh, a bunch of leaves in a, in a trash bag and let it sit there and it'll heat up a little bit. And, but it's not going to do what a good hot compost pile, Berkeley method composting can do for you. And that's pretty much what I'm trying to get my chickens to do. It's like the Berkeley method on frickin' steroids. 
There you go. Berkeley method on steroids. That's what we'll call this, right? That's good enough, folks. As I said, good enough for government work. Kidding, I'm kidding. I do way better than government work. This building may fall down. <laughs> Let's give you an inside look. Couple of girls back here working. Scratching around, pecking, eating. And I will be checking them for mites. I'll pick them up, I'll check under their wings, check them in, in their little ear holes and nose holes and in their crevices and coming in and see what happened. Yeah, pile it back up. Time to take it apart, girl. And hopefully the moisture from this pile won't be a problem. In this part of North Carolina, we get down to, shoot, we'll get down to the teens for a week or two. Uh, maybe, maybe single digits, maybe for a week, uh, a couple days. But it doesn't get real, real, real cold. We're gonna test this. Not only see how much compost the chickens are going to be making, are we stacking more functions on top of these, on top of this to where the chickens are making compost, but the compost is making heat for the chickens. There's another symbiosis. It's, I think it's going to be pretty cool there. Are y'all enjoying it at night? You have a little warmth, a little extra heat, Big Blue? What's up, big guy? Here's a little play pile for him right there. Just a little pile of leaves that's falling in their front yard. I rake up every day, let them play in it, just like that girl. And then I've shown you this pile back here last time. Another play pile that I rake up every other day for them and let them destroy it, take it back apart. This pile back here and the pile that we just looked at up in the front are gonna be the next ones that go in the house once I pulled out, once I pull out what we just turned, what we just stacked back up. And then after that, we've got another stack of uh, stash of leaves right here. We've got another one there. We've got another one there. And then we've got more than we can handle. <laughs> more leaves than we can shake a stick at. <laughs> so we'll have no shortage of carbon to be able to put in this. I just need to go ahead and get it in a pile so it doesn't start to break down too much and then the ground takes it all. If you missed the first video that I put up about this, I'll slide that up right now. This is the one popping in. Go ahead and click on that and it'll bring you to the first video. And if you want to see the build of this chicken coop, it's popping in right now. You can click on that and it'll show you how I built this thing. Little preview, it came from that fallen barn right there. <laughs>